Hello and welcome for this new tutorial on Unreal Engine 5. Last time we used our control rig to create some animation and today we will start using them in the gameplay. We will add a different interaction when we will punch, we will launch the character if we touch someone. We will do all of this interaction and we will start straight away. So let's go in. Here is the tree animation that we have created last time. We have the block animation, we have the punch animation and we have the uh, dive animation, so we're gonna use them. So first, we will need to create some input. So we'll go in our input folder and we will start by renaming the input action role because we are not gonna do a role anymore, we'll do a dive. Just rename this, he's not very happy. It's okay. First of all, we have the input action dive, we'll create two new inputs. There will be input action block. And there with the input action attack. Okay. Now we'll go in our input mapping context. So as a, we have renamed the input action role to the input action dive, it's already set up to the E key of the keyboard. So we'll leave it like that. We'll create a new mapping for the EA input action block. We will do uh, a right click. So we'll click on the keyboard there and do right click you have the right mouse button and we'll do the same for the attack and this is gonna be the left mouse button I'm gonna save and close this now we can go in our player blueprint we will first start by deleting the role animation we'll remove everything so we'll go ahead and start with the dive animation so we'll do input action dive when we start we will need to call the server, so we'll add the custom event s underscore uh, player dive. We will need a boolean. We'll create a new boolean called is diving. We will get our is diving. We will add a branch. Just to not boolean for the diving so if we are not diving if we are not diving we will call we'll create a new custom event multicast layer dive just gonna on the server do a run on server and on the multicast do a multicast if we are not diving we can actually call the player dive. Okay, so when we actually dive, we will call our server underscore player dive. So for the dive animation, what do we want to do? We want to launch the character to use the physics. And for the vector, it should be the forward vector of the capsule. So that means we will have a dive going forward. We'll start with the capsule. So we'll get the capsule component. We'll get the forward vector. I will do a multiply and then I will split them. So I can get this. This I will do to a float. This one I will split. We we'll just disconnect and split. Two vector. Two vector. And then I will split this pin. Do this one to a float. Split this one. And I will be able to put this and this. And on Z I will do. 0.25 so that when we will dive we will go a little bit up we don't want to go too much up and we'll create a new variable will be the dive strength it will be a float and we just to put this one to a float again so we will have this vector multiplied by the dive strength we'll compare it to set a default value we'll put 1400 and with this, we'll be able to launch the character. So we'll do launch character. We'll do launch velocity and we will override the X and Y axis. Because if I'm getting pushed somewhere and I actually dive, I want to be able to switch my position. Then we will need to create a montage. So we'll right click on our animation dive and we will do a create anim montage. With this AM underscore dive 
will save and I will be able to use it. I will go back to my blueprint character. And we will do a play animation on the mesh. So we get the mesh and do play animation, play montage. In this play montage, we will put our animation dive. We're just gonna change the play rate to 1.5 just to have the animation going a little bit faster. When we start doing the dive animation, we need to set our is diving to true. We will do that. And then we will need to check if we are actually falling. Because if I jump out of a platform, I will be able to keep diving even if there I'm not on the floor. So um, I will check that if I am falling, I will not change my is diving animation in is diving boolean. So I will do that in the event tick. I will have to find my event tick is there. With the authority there, I will do a branch. And if we get the is falling, if I'm not falling, I will set this to false. Okay, so I put 1.5 there in the play montage. I actually need to put 0 0.5 because the animation is too fast. And now we actually have something. Maybe too slow. Go ahead and put 0 0.75. Actually, I have a nice dive animation. If I get punch by like this, I will do dive. So it's good like that. Now we'll do the block animation. For the block animation, it's going to be simple. We just do in protection block. And uh, we will create a new boolean that will called is blocking. We will set is blocking at true when we start blocking, and when it's uh, when it's completed or cancelled, we'll put it at false. Okay, so here is our running graph. First of all, we'll go in the event graph, and we we'll need to get our is blocking boolean. We'll go in the variable. We create a new one is blocking. We do a set and we'll get our character. We'll cast this to our blueprint. Our character. Plug this into the Zen tree and we we'll get is blocking. And we we'll plug this in and plug that in. Okay, so we have our is blocking boolean. Now we'll change our anim graph. First of all, I would like to disconnect this and I will create a cache for this. New save cache pose. Call this main animation cache. Then we will need to actually do a blending pose. First, we'll do a blend pose by boolean. Blend pose by bool. We'll use this. When we will be get this blocking. When we are not blocking, we'll put it there. So when we are not blocking, the true is gonna go into the anim into the output pose. And when we are blocking, the false is gonna go into the output pose and we'll do the blocking animation. In the true, we will just use our main animation cache. When we are not blocking, we just use the main animation cache. And when we are blocking, we will do a blend pose by cache by bones blend bones yeah we we'll do a layer blend per bone the base pose is going to be our main animation cache and the blend pose zero is going to be the attack block the animation block that in then we need to choose which bone we want to blend so we'll go into the layer setup we open the index the index zero and in the branch filter we'll add a new branch filter and in this we have to specify the bones uh, for my blocking animation i want the character to still be running from his pelvis i think pelvis and under so we not touch this and we we'll probably go we want the 
upper part of our body to be layering. So we'll do maybe a spine tree. We're going to put spine zero tree. Play and save. And now if I go there and actually right click, you can see that my character is, is doing the block animation. If I go next to this guy, you will see that it's not exactly the same animation. The animation is the same, it's just that to be able to put my end like this, I cannot really put it like this. Because if you see the animation, the both arms, they are actually blending. So we cannot do that as we have the physics control. It's blocking both of my hands, it's like touching. But it's still looking good. So we'll keep that, we'll actually use it to change uh, to change our velocity when we get lunch. We'll go ahead and find the lunch, lunch character on touch. So I have this lunch character on touch that is used by all the different props in the environment like the hammer. If the hammer touch me, it calculates his velocity and it calculates, it calculates the lunch velocity and then send that to the character to launch him. What we'll do is that if I am blocking, I will divide by maybe we'll divide by two the velocity. We'll go ahead and try this. We do a branch up. We'll do this. Just gonna get this there. So it's blocking. So if I'm not blocking, I'm using the velocity as it was before, and if I am blocking, I will do this and plug this one back there because this doesn't change. We'll get our velocity and we will divide by a boule by a float. We'll divide by two. We'll see how does it. If I don't block and I go ahead against the hammer, I get launched very far away. And if I block, we can see that. I actually block the stuff and I go launch a little bit, but not that much. It's gonna be good for now. Later on, we'll add some energy because we will not be able to block all the time. We will just cancel all the obstacles. So we'll add some energy and when we will block, we'll use a little bit of our energy when we just block when just stay in the animation. And when we actually get touched by something and we are blocking, we will lose even more energy. I will do that later. For now, we just want to actually use the animation and see how it goes in the game and how to make it work. So now we'll do the attack animation. For the attack animation, we'll go back in our player character and we we'll just do a input action attack. We will create a new boolean called is attacking. And when we start, we will set is attacking to two. Okay. That's good. Okay, so we set up this boolean as true and now we need to use it in the application blueprint. First of all, I would like to go in my animation. In my animation attack, I would like to create a new notify. When we actually are there, we are actually touching someone, so we'll add the notify, new notify, like attack, touch. So this is where we actually check if I actually touch someone. We'll save, and now we'll go in here and we we'll need to do something like that. We'll just unplug this, put it there. We'll do a new blend by bool. Put this into the two. We'll create a new variable is attacking. We actually go ahead and set it up. From here we we'll get is attacking. Plug in there. Well, save and in here we we'll get is attacking. Not boolean 
in here. And in the false, we'll do the same thing as this. Copy this, put it there. The false, and in the animation block, we'll put the animation attack. Play and save. That should be good. I just forgot something into the animation block. We'll do a loop animation there. And now uh, into the event graph, we will use our notify. So we can now do attack touch. And we can see that there is an event anim notify attack touch. So when the animation actually triggers this notify, it will go in here and it will uh, start this event. So we will cast our player blueprint. Uh, we'll create a new event in the character to attack. To check if we have touched something. So we'll go here and create a new custom event. Attack character. We will do a sphere trust by channel. And the radius should be something like 75. And for the start and end, we will go in our viewport. And we will actually do something. We'll go into use animation assets. We'll use the animation attack. We can see where we are actually landing our arm. It's some, somewhere there. We will create a new scene component. The scene will be into the capsule. This scene, I will change his location to be next to his east. Somewhere there. We name this to Touching point file. We just put this to our animation blueprints. Okay. My touching point is there. We go into the event graph and we use it. We get touch point. We get the world uh, location. Put it into the start. It's there and we plug this into the end as well. We change the draw debug type to persistent to see. How it is, and we will start testing. I forgot to add it in here. We need to call the that function. Attack character. Compile and save. So now, if I right click, I actually block, and if I punch, 75 is a little bit too much. You can see that I'm blocking to the animation attack. Uh, 75 is too much. We'll maybe put 50. We'll go back in our blueprint and put here 50. Maybe we'll put this touching point a little bit in the front. Could be better. Um, now, if I actually touch, so we we'll do a branch. If I touch something. I will break this hit result because we need to have the hit actor. We'll cast the BP uh, player character. So if I touch another character, I will launch that character. So we we'll do launch character on touch. And we need to set the is attacking to false. Let me start doing this. We need to do it when after we launch. We need to do it if even if we don't touch. We touch something, but it's not the player character. I need to do it if we, if we don't touch. To be sure, we come back to our default default state. state. For our velocity, we will get our capsule component. We will get the forward vector. We will multiply this. We will go we'll unplug this. We will do this to be a vector. Be a vector. We will split this pin. Transform this one to a float. We'll put here 1000. Split this pin and plug X and Y. And in the Z, I will just put 1 in here. Then we plug this velocity in here. Compile and save and we will test it out. I forgot to put loop animation into the animation attack. Compile and save and we will see. Now. Okay, we can go ahead and punch people now. I 
can actually punch people. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. We'll just remove the draw debug type to, type to none. And I just want to make this public so I can change it. Make our other character block. The animation looks not very good. Uh, that's because it's blending with the physics control. And as the top of the body is actually controlled by the physics, it's actually going a little bit weird. Oh, it's not that bad. Maybe we will tweak up the animation later. Maybe we don't need to put the end in front of his face. Maybe we can just punch straight away. But it will be good for now. We are our blocking animation, our hitting animation, and our dive animation. We just change this bunny to be blocking. I go in here and he's blocking. So now he's doing the block animation. Now if I go there and I punch this guy, we can see that he's blocking my animation. He's blocking my attack. It looks like the bun is actually pushing as not, as not punching. But it's kind of okay. So we'll go ahead and keep that. You can see that we can jump and dive, we can block the different stuff. And we can punch people. That's it for today. I hope you actually like this video. If you like it, please drop a like and subscribe if you don't want to miss the next one. If you have any feedback or if you want to uh, add the feature in our game, tell me in the comment section. I will try to make a video about it and we'll try to add the feature in the game. For now, the game is looking pretty good. It's not very perfect with the animation. Maybe we'll have to change our animation to make it a little bit better. We will see later. For the next video, which will be a small video on how to add stamina to the character, make the stamina react to the action that the character does and be able to regenerate over time. And after that, the next video will be about the main menu for the game. We will have to add a lobby for the character to connect. And when we have enough character, we will launch and we will go into the map and go into the gameplay. We'll be able to start playing the game and see you on the next video.